And you went up to Shemayim for three years in the Gan Eden. So although in the Nigla, in the Chitzoniyot of Torah, we always learned that there was the Torah of the Torah, then he got up and everybody was happy and they danced and they danced. And they, according to the Zohar, there was a, there was a cut in the throat of Yitzhak and he died. And there was, again, a Revi'it of Dan. And he went up to Shemayim for three years and he came back down. But the Zohar says this, what was the purpose of this? Why did this have to happen? So you know that Adam Ravino was, was debating, he didn't understand how it is that the Shavuot has said, Ki bi Yitzhaki kared hazara, you're going to have future generations from Yitzhak, and I'll tell him, put him on the altar, put him on the Mizleah. But of course, Adam didn't question HaKadosh Baruch Hu. He accepted it, and he did exactly what he was supposed to do. It says the Zohar HaKadosh, that Yitzhak Avinu was born with a female neshama, and he could not have children. Now that he was on the Akhida, and his neshama went up, his Zachar Neshama came down and was able to have children. And this is such an important lesson in all of life, because many times we have questions about our situations in life, and we have a stira, and we say, well, you told me this, and now you're telling me that, so what's going on over here? But look at this, says the Zohar, Gufa, because of the Zohar, who told Abraham to put Yitzhak on the that's why he was able to have children. Meaning, because he said, Kachna Pincha, and put him on the Mizbeach, this is exactly how I'm going to be Mekayim to you, Kibi Yitzhak Pichar so what you see again is what the Zohar Kodesh has modeled for us is that the purpose of Yira is only so that good things should come from it. Meaning impossible things which could otherwise not happen will come from this Seder. Which is what we say on Rosh Hashanah we read about Sarah couldn't have any children and she's able to have children and Rachel and Hannah and all these, all these Akharat which B'dera HaTara couldn't have children. Rosh Hashanah is the beginning of the process in which all these things happen. That if a person follows through and he has that we've been speaking about emunah and bitachon and simcha, which I'm articula dinim, so then it's not just happy clappy, it's you're able to transform the dinim and the katrim and turn them over into an opportunity to release a person from the base asarim that he's in, whatever he finds himself in, whether it's bone, chayim, zane, certainly in the way of Hashem, it's a tremendous transformation. As the Gemara says, Barash Hashanah Yatsa Yosef Bibita Asarim. Yosef left his jail on Rosh Hashanah. And, we, and that's a siman to every single Jew that whatever Beit HaSurim that he's in, he's able to leave on Rosh Hashanah. And that's the Shara of the Pasuk which we say, we say Shir HaMa'alot from Rosh Hashanah to Yom HaKippurim, after Yishtabach. Many reasons why we say that, but one of the reasons why we say that is because of the middle Pasuk, which like, we, 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 we focus a lot on the, maybe the beginning and the end, but the middle pasuk it really explains this entire Zohar Kodesh. We say, Ki imcha slicha, Laman tibareh. Translate those words. You have the slicha in your hand, so that we should have Yira. Meaning, the purpose of the process of Rosh Hashanah Tim Kippur, which is slicha mechila kapara, is for the purpose of Yira Shamayim. Like you see here, Rabbi Elohim asa sheyiru melechana. That's the process. So that's why we read that chapter to know that we should be focusing on asking Kadosh Baruch Hu for Yirat Shemai. That's why the days are called Yamim Hanoraim, the days of Yira. And we ask Kadosh Baruch Hu that we should be Zoichet to Yirat Shemai. And if we can't muster it up ourselves, which in these generations is a very difficult thing to do, it's an opportunity to ask Kadosh Baruch Hu that He should gift us with Yirat Shemai. That's really what the whole Tachlit of everything is. How do you define Yirat Shamayim? Is it like the consciousness that Hashem rule the world, or how do you define it? Okay, so let, well, let's explain. You're asking a very good question. And again, we don't have to go through all these Marim come up. We're already 15 minutes in, and I'm sure everybody has what to do today. Even if we just pick out the Ananim, it's, it's very important, especially to clarify what Yirat Shamayim is. So the Zayar says, and I'm starting to explain, that there's three different levels of Yirat Shamayim. Yirat Ha'onash, Yirat HaRamamut, the Yirat Chet. Three levels. Yirat HaOnesh is that a person is afraid that the Kaddish Baruch Hu is going to patch him. That's a basic Yirat. And of that, the Rambam says that every single human being is Shayach to Yirat HaOnesh. Every male, female, child, even a Behemah understands Yirat HaOnesh. Because if you hold a whip over a Behemah, he knows he needs to do what you need him to do. And a Goi even understands Yirat HaOnesh. So when Hashem, when we say that the Kaddish Baruch Hu judges the world, and everybody's included in that, that's on the level of Yirat Shemayim, which is Yirat HaOnesh. And even a guy, 
if he, if he has enough knowledge, he'll do chuba during this time of year because he's included in the judgment too. And if he has yuata onesh and he shapes up and he keeps Shabbat mitzvot and he helps B'nai Yisrael, it's good for him too. But if this, like we said before, if this is the Yirat Shanayim, which even a Goy Shayach to, that means a Yid, a Jew, is a high Shayach would lead to a much higher Yirat Shanayim. And that's why, although in the Nigla of Torah, Yirat HaOnish is very acceptable for man, woman, and child. And if a person goes a whole life with Yirat HaOnish, he can be called a Tzadik. In Pinyat HaTayra, if a person only lives his life off Yirat HaOnish, he was in what the Zohar calls in a state of Tohu Vavohu his whole life. It's not, it's not, considered to be praiseworthy for a person to be living in Yerat HaOnish. <coughs> Yerat HaOnish is something which we said, I think, yesterday too, that a Jew is supposed to use in a matzah of emergency. That if a person is about to do other and his temptations overcome him, and he's about to do something that he shouldn't do, and he can't help himself. So the last resort, as the Gemara says, he should do Kriyat, go to the Beit Midrash first, then say Kriyat Shema. These are all ways of, of awakening Yerat Shema, of Yerat HaRavuot. But if there's nothing else that he could do, <coughs> And he's going to do a chet chas shalom, so he remembers Yom Hamita. Means that you're going to pay for it. Okay, go ahead. But it's going to hurt. So that's considered to be a last resort. Just like you find people who are uneasy in life, and they're very nervous and they're very anxious, they're living always in a state of emergency. And that's like Yerat HaOnish. If a person is always in Yerat HaOnish mode, he's living in a state of emergency. What type of Yishav Adas is that? Like we said before, we're supposed to achieve a state through these days of Yom HaNoraim, that when we walk out of the sukkah, we're in a state of Yishav Adat for the whole year. Well, if, if it's all about Yerat HaOnesh, Yamin Yorayim, so then how does that go together with Yishav Adat? It really doesn't. So the sort of the Shofar is in order to awaken the Yirat HaOnesh to become Yirat HaRamud. It's called Ha'alat HaYirat, Ha'alat HaMalchut. The Tizor I mentioned before, the Sirah of Malchut is the Sirah which is connected Yirat Shemayim. And the whole secret of the Shofar, the Rizal says, is to be ma'aleh the sirat ha-malchut. Which is why we speak a lot about malchiyot and the malchut of HaKadosh Baruch Hu at this time. Malchut Hashem and Yirat Shemayim go together. Take a look at the Lishonot and the Machso, you'll see very clearly. That, that, we, that the, the revelation and the gilu of HaKadosh Baruch Hu's malchut is through Yirat Shemayim. So are you saying Yirat HaOnish, Yirat HaOnimut, and Yirat Yirat HaChet. So now, Yirat HaChet, I'm just going to finish this thought and come to your tachet in a second. The tachlit of these days of Yimei Hadin is in order to be ma'aleh at the malchut, in order to, to lift up Yirat HaOnish to become Yirat HaRamut. That's the tachlit. And to get Yirat HaRamut, it has to be a gift from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It's gifted. So we need to ask HaKadosh Baruch Hu that we should gift it. Yirat HaOnish is what we could do. Yirat HaRamut is something which HaKadosh Baruch Hu does for us. And we can uh, facilitate the process. We can help. We can create a certain... Itaruta dilatata, as the Zohar calls it, we can make a slight awakening of that by thinking about the Yuchad Hashem, Hit Boninut, Hit Bodidut. We can, but usually that's more dimyonot. But it's only real when a person feels that a Kadosh Baruch Hu Zirah comes upon him. Many people, they have times in their lives where they, they, they feel and they can testify that they felt the Yuchad Hashem upon themselves. And they felt the Pacha. It's a very sweet Pacha that a person has when he feels a Kadosh Baruch Hu's presence. It's Gilu Birada. There's a certain trepidation that a person has to be standing in the awesome oneness of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. But at the same time, it's very sweet. And that's why these days, on the one hand, they're, they're days of tremendous pachad. If a person is zochet, to Yirat HaRamut, but it's very sweet days. That's why we say Tapuach Bidvash. Tapuach is the Malchus. Tapuach in Kaddishin is always the Malchut in Kabbalah. But it's dipped in Dvash as if to say this is a very sweet Malchus. This is a very sweet Yira. As we say in Atach and Atanu, I don't know the Nusach that, that you have, but in Atah Hanatana, we conclude with the words, we say, um, We're Davek, Davek is Dvash. It has the quality of Dvekut, of sticking, sticky. We're, we have Dvekus with our Yira. One of the pieces, one in which we say, uh, which is written by Rabbi Aaron Kalina, one of the great Hasidic brothers, he said that the, 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 the piece one is called Ka Efsof. You know, have you ever heard of that? Ka Efsof? That's one. There's a, there's a very beautiful tune that he composed. And we say there in the Sach and the we say, noyam Bring down to us noam yiratecha, your sweet yira, your sweet delicious yira. That's the fourth of that. Shabbat is the time of the week also that we take all of the Yirat HaOnesh of the week and we elevate it with the Ha'alat HaMalchut 
and the zeichet to a yibat shemayim, which is a yibat haromot, and a hava and yibat haromot must go together. Whereas in the world of yibat haonesh, like we spoke about yesterday, yibat haonesh and hava are, are opposites of each other because you don't love somebody who may hurt you. If a child is always thinks that his father or his mother is going to condemn them and to hurt them and to patch them and to punish them, then they're not going to love their parents. But if it's if if there's a structure in the home and there is a yibat haromot of the parents because they acted up outstanding people and their examples. And they show love to their children, so there can be a Yuat Haramah Musa, and it goes very well with the Havad. It's Mishulab, they go together. And so we're supposed to go from Yuat Haonesh and elevate that, and that's the Skula, the Shofar. El is a time that we gather a lot of Yuat Haonesh, coming from the days of the Din, it's a time to cry and to be afraid. That's the Avoidah. But if you gather up a lot of Yuat Haonesh in Chodesh Elul, and then you hear the Shreif and Rosh Hashanah, <coughs> it has the mystical power of transforming all the Yuat Haonesh to being Yuat Shema. I, I once heard that. The first step, it's Ira, it's, it's Pacha. But you cannot be there all life. You have to transcend Pacha. That's right. And that's what loves come. That's right. That's why we shouldn't live in a state of emergency that Hashem is going to be patching them all the time. The whole Tachlit is again, it's not the Tachlit of the Din is for Yerat Shaman. I will keep my Sah, she will not know if I know. I can be Zayfet to Yerat Shaman, this is the Tachlit of these days. And then from that to Ahava, and that's why, as the Sarim explained, from Shoshana to Yom Kippur is this Yuat HaRomamus, Shiva Meira, and then from Yom Kippur, Sukkot, and Tosh Mon Yatza, it's Shiva Meira. As the Midrash says, Ulakachtem Lacham Yem HaRishon, the Midrash says, Rishon Lacheshbon Avana. This is the first day of calculating the Avana. So I'm going to question, ask what type of a Midrash is this? This is the first day that Hashem is counting Mitzvot and Avirot? I thought He was counting in the Rosh Hashanah. So how could you say, we'll take the Lulav and the Yatuag on the first day? What well, first day? This is not the first day. This is the 15th day of the month. Then what does it mean? We show the Cheshbon Abanot. says the Bnei Yisachar. He says, because now that we're doing Chivam Yahava, well, Hashem has to make a new calculation. Because until now we had a Mitzvot and an Averot. But now HaKadosh Baruch is going to take all the Averot and turn them into Mitzvot. So until now, you'd say you had a, a million mitzvot. But now, if you had a million avirot too, so now you're going to have a new cheshbon called two million mitzvot. So that's called Rishon cheshbon avirot. The Kaddish is making a new cheshbon of the avirot now. Since you do the Tshuva Me'avah, all the avirot, they also become mitzvot. Tshuva Me'avah, you mean the chav kein. You feel the embrace and you feel the love. It's supposed to be a type of a love that will last us the whole year. But you see the process from Elul, to Rosh Hashanah, to Yom Kippur, the Shreifer's involvement, as it says in the Pasuk, Allah Elohim b'tshu'a, Havaya v'kol shofar. Elohim is Yirat Ha'onesh, and Havaya is Yirat Ha'onesh. He was able to elevate Yirat Ha'onesh into being Yirat Ha'onesh, and that's the Skula of the Shofar and Rosh Hashanah. So we spoke about Yirat Ha'onesh and Yirat Ha'onesh, and that's Yirat Ha'onesh. Yirat Ha'onesh is considered to be the Yirat that a person is afraid, and he's concerned, and he's worried that he's going to lose his relationship with HaKadosh Baruch. They find if a, if, a, if a boy and a girl are dating and it's going very well and one of them is more interested than the other one so then the, the other party who, who wants that the other one should like them is very worried about this shidduch that it's going to fall through because since he, he really likes her and he wants to see the shidduch that it should go through so he's afraid he's afraid that, that something's going to happen and he's going to lose out on the relationship he's going to lose out on the love that he feels and that he wants that person to have for him too so since Yirat HaRomamos goes together with Ahava, and it brings to Ahava, like he said, V'yachid l'vabinu l'avu al Yirat Shemecha. So when a person reaches that state of Ahava, which is connected with Yirat HaRomamos, so after that comes Yirat Chait. Yirat Chait means that I'm so worried that I may do a Chait which will blemish my relationship with the Kaddosh Baruch. That the Ahava that I have with him is going to fall away or to be weakened if I do an Avirat HaRomamos. So that's called Yirat Chait. So that's already taking the Indian of Yerat HaOnesh and elevating it to its real Makar. Meaning, because even Yerat HaChid, it, it even sounds like Yerat HaOnesh, but the difference is, Yerat HaOnesh means I'm afraid of the Onesh which will come from the Chid. Yerat HaChid means I'm not afraid of the Onesh, I'm afraid of the Chid itself, because the Chid is going to damage the relationship. So this is considered to be Ma'al Absolut, you know, recycling. Now, Jewish recycling is that you take the Yerat HaOnesh and you recycle it to being Yerat HaChid. That's why on Shemini Yatzeret is a zman of Gishmei Bracha. We bow for Geshem. Why? Because what's Geshem? Geshem is taking all the water from the lower world and it, it's called uh, condensation. What's it called? When it goes up? 
Evaporation. Evaporation, condensation? Is it condensation? Evaporation. 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 What's condensation? That's when, when the evaporated molecules join together, they condense. And, and then, then come drops okay. until they fall. Exactly. So the first is evaporation, which takes the, 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 the garbage water in the ocean and the rivers, whatever it is, and it sends it up to evaporation and then it condenses, it's mitzam, bitzimtzum, <coughs> and it becomes, then it becomes rain. So Hashem is making recycling, the huh? He's recycling. So since the whole process of these days is to recycle, we're recycling Aveira to becoming mitzvot, we're recycling um, the, the, the raindrops. I mean, the water to becoming raindrops. That's also recycled. So that's because of the Shorish Hadlarim. We're taking Yurata Onesh, which is a psolet, and we're taking it and we're turning it into something very beautiful, which is the, what it's supposed to be in its Shorish. That's called Eshit Chayal Tet Bala, that the Malchut is considered to be a crown on her, on her husband's head. Like the, like the Malchut is a crown for the Keter, which means as if to say that when you Ma'ale, the Yurata Onesh to being Yurat Chayt, now you really have Yirat Shamayim Bishorsha. That's called the Tshuva. Not only are we doing Tshuva, but Yirat Shamayim is doing Tshuva. We're sending Yirat Shamayim up to its Shorish, so that Yirat Shamayim should return to its place where it's supposed to be. How do we know that? Because there's a big question, does HaKadosh Baruch Hu have Yirat Shamayim? I Meaning we know that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is a Makar, and everything that HaKadosh Baruch Hu does, we do too. So we say, Mahu Afakar. Can we say, Mahu Yira Afanu Yare? Does Hashem have Yira of anything? Bukhar or no? This is what the Tzadikim say, that the Pasuk says, we read it a couple of parashat ago, Ma Hashem Elokei Nashem Neimach. Ki im Yira. Hashem says, I'm only asking for Yira Shema. So the Mepharshim explained, because Hashem doesn't have Yira Shema. Yaza Ava, as all the other Midot, but he said, something which I don't have, which is so precious to me, because I don't have it, is Yira Shema. I beg of you, give me Yira Shema. That's what the Gemara says, based on that Pasuk, HaKol Bidei Shamaim, <laughs> However, I'll be so that Vadaik the Vadaik of Jesus has Yirat Shemaim too. I'm not going to explain a very subtle, very important kuda about this. I just want to focus on one aspect of this. Everything is Vidaik Shemaim. That's what the Gemara uses in the Lashon. Hakol Vidaik Shemaim Chutz. They could have just said Yirat Shemaim Lo Vidaik Shemaim. They didn't say that. Anybody who's sensitive to the Shonot Hazal understands Hakol Vidaik Shemaim means even Yirat Shemaim, but. Chutz, he puts it out in our possession so that we could use it. But he's the boss of Yerat Shemaim too. And the Noemar Melech explained in Parshat Vayigash that we say in the Psukim, and we say this on Motzi Shabbat, because Shabbat is when we go into the week and we're supposed to take this Yira, which was zoyche to by Rabbi the Ravin with the Shalosh Shudot, which is the Pachlit of Shabbat, because Shabbat is the Yemid of Yerat Shemaim. As the Zayar says, the word Bereshit is the letters Yare Shabbat. Shabbat is the day of Yira, but Yerat HaRomot, because of the Hava, so it's if you have over at sun, but on but on Shalosh Tudon, we're Zayachet to Yirat Hachet. And where do we see a Kaddish Baruch Hu as Yirat Hachet? Because no one in says, we say, Uch Yiratcha Evartecha. Uch Yiratcha Evartecha. We say, Yiratcha, you have a Yira. What is Hashem's Yira? Says no one in Hashem's Yira is that he's going to lose out in his relationship with B'nai Israel. That's his Yira. Meaning, Yirat Ha'onesh HaKadosh Baruch Hu doesn't have. Yirat Ha'romamus, probably he doesn't have, but I'll be so you can explain Yirat Ha'romamus too. That he has a Romamus for Tamidah I'm not going to explain it now. However, Yirat Chet HaKadosh Baruch Hu has. So now you understand why elevating Yirat Ha'onesh to being Yirat Ha'chet is an act of Tshuva. Tshuva means returning to your source. Because when you return Yirat Shemayim to its source, now how do you know that that's where it belongs? Because HaKadosh Baruch Hu has it. And if he has it, that's its shorish. And that's what we're in for. That we have the same yiratchei. You're afraid of losing out on the relationship. I'm afraid of losing out on the relationship. Perfect. That's the way that the relationship is supposed to be. We have a, like, we don't want to lose the relation with, with Hashem. That's why we're, we don't see. That's right. But the opposite, Hashem doesn't want to, to lose have a relation with our soul. So he hopes that we don't sin. Oh. <laughs> and the fact that he hopes that we don't sin gives us the proper Yerushalayim mm-hmm. so that we don't sin. But that's really, you know, we're trying to map out a whole uh, a plan here <coughs> and how, the, how these days are evolving. Elul, Rosh Hashanah, Tim Kippur, Tishmini Atzeres, that we're, there's a whole Seder of Ha'alat HaMalchut, which means the Ha'alat Yerushalayim, the return Yerushalayim to Yerushalayim. Mm-hmm. 
which by the way, the halacha we said too, is that the, the sachach, the Gemara says, has to come from psalat gorin v'yake, which means that what sachach? Sachach is uh, the garbage, meaning you know, the tree, the tree has many purposes. From one tree, you make an entire sugar. One tree. That's why in the Gemara, in the Josh, we find that it says, that Aram took the malachim and he put them under a tree. So the Midrash says it was Sukkot at that time, and he put them underneath a Sukkah. Tachat ha'eitz zu Sukkah. So why is a tree a Sukkah? Because you can make a Sukkah from one tree. If you take the bark of the tree, you can make the walls. If you take the, the leaves and the branches, you can make the sach. And if you take the fruit, you can have the decorations. The Gemara speaks about decorations of a Sukkah, talking about hanging fruit. Where do you get that from? From a tree. So you see, from one tree, you can make an entire sukkah. But the schach is the most important part of the sukkah. Because the Gemara says, Shem Shemayim Chal al sukkah. But the sukkah is called schach. Like Rashi says in the Yenim Asecha Sukkah, that the reason why the sukkah is called sukkah al Shem HaSchach, because that's the most important part. According to the Zohar, the Kaddish Baruch Hu, he sits down on the, on the sukkah, and that's why the Shekhinah is rests on the schach, because the Kaddish Baruch Hu, the Shekhinah comes upon it, and it's like Kinesha Yalikino. So the schach is what infuses the entire sukkah with Kedusha Sashem. So the schach is the most chashuv. But you know that of the tree, the most important part of the tree is not the schach. That's the psalmist. The most important part is the decorations, which is the fruit, because you live from that. And then the bark, because you can make all types of, of beautiful uh, woodcraft that you see here in this room and everywhere in this beautiful place. But what are, you, what are you making from, from, from the leaves? Nothing. It's really just food for the animals. But yet, on Sukkot, the most chashu out of all of them, and the order is reversed. The most important is the schach. The second most important is the walls. And then after that, the decorations are extra. But the way that it is to enjima needs is that the decorations are the most important because you need to eat them to live. And then the bark is to give you shelter. And then the schach, maz, it's a mabakah. But on sukkah, it's in the reverse. Odem hofo chraisi. But since the sukkah is coming into Eilam Haba, Eilam Haba is the opposite of Eilam Haba, everything is in reverse. But that's called recycling. You take the garbage, and you make something very chosh out of that. You take the averis, and you make mitzvot out of that. You take U.S. Achek, U.S. Aonesh, and you make U.S. State out of that. That's Rosh Hashanah. It's recycling. Kodesh Rebbe has this process of recycling. The whole world is sustained upon the need of recycling. That's why it happens at this time of the year, because what's, what happens on Rosh Hashanah? Rosh Hashanah is not a tuba because you come back to the beginning. Tuba means that you return to the source. So since the beginning of creation was Rosh Hashanah, and we go through the cycle of the year, and we know that in Pimiyot, in, 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 in Torah, not just Pimiyot, but the world is a cycle. Time is a cycle. But by the Goyim, time just moves forward. By B'nai Israel, time is circular. That when we say, Shachiyana Bikimu Bikano Lazman Azeh, it means Lazman Azeh. It means Rosh Hashanah from... The first year of creation, the first day of creation, comes back. Because time is circular. It's a creation. If it wasn't a creation, it would just go straight. So they believe that time preceded the world. So time just goes forward. So for them, a birthday is just the Zeich of Elma. It's not the day that you were born. It's just that it happened to be on the calendar. And so we, we remember it. We remember it's just a Zeich But it's not a real Simcha. Going to have real Simcha. Because time is always moving forward. And they're not, they never come back to the days of before. But for a Jew who understands that time is circular, someone when it's, when it's a birthday, and it's uh, uh, Gimel Elul, let's say, so Gimel Elul is, I'm returning to the day that I was born. That's the day. It's not just a Zeicher to the day. It's the day. So we could be very much with that. It's not just a Zeicher Be'alma. It's Mamash Atatava. So we know how to do Chu Simcha. Because that's Mamash It. That's Atatava. So when you come back to Rosh Hashanah, you're coming back to the day of creation. That's called Tshuva. If it was just moving forward, you could never come back. So we have tshuva because we're coming back. So that's called recycling. Recycling means that return it to its source. It's tshuva. Because the, since the year is in a way, it's in a state of tshuva. So we too are in a state of tshuva. I'll just add one last thing. It's getting late. It's almost 40 minutes. That Rosh Hashanah, the Beit HaMikdash is the place in the Jewish calendar, is the place in the world where everything started from. The Beit HaMikdash is the place from where all of creation began. So Rosh Hashanah, just like is, the, is, the, is in time, the beginning of creation, so too, the Beit HaMikdash is the place in Makom, which is the beginning of creation. 
That's what Moshe Wolfson and other tzaddikim that they say. That you read Pashas Kisava, like we just read, before Rosh Hashanah. Why? Because what's Bikurim? Bikurim means that you take your first fruits and you bring it to the base of Mikdash, which is the first place. First fruits, they come to the first place. And that's exactly this idea of, of retaking Rashid and bringing it to the Rashid. So the Tadakim explained that's why Beit HaMikdash is the Gematria of Rosh Hashanah, 860. Rosh Hashanah is 860, which happens to be also 10 times the Shem Elohim. You know, Elohim is 86. So, 10 times 86 is 860. So Rosh Hashanah is Gematria 860, which is 10 times the Shem Elohim because it's Midat Adin, and there's 10 days of Aser Sim and there's 10 Sirat. So you have to be Ma'aleh, the Midat Adin, which is the Sirat HaMalchot of each and every Sirat, to be Metakeh Kol Asbira. Ten times it'll okay. This is the Gematria of Rosh Hashanah. It's also this, the Gematria of Yisam Mikdash. Because by the, all the other Yomim Toivim, Pesach, Shavuot, and Sokis, there's a mitzvah Aliyah Laregel. We have to come to the Beit HaMikdash. Why is there no Aliyah Laregel by Rosh Hashanah? Because the Beit HaMikdash comes to us. Wherever you are, the Beit HaMikdash comes to you. That's the sort of Rosh Hashanah. How to explain that is for another time. But you, you return, wherever you are, wherever Beit Knesset you are, the Beit HaMikdash comes to you. So you are at the Rishit HaZman, and you are at the Rishit HaMakom also. But Hashem said, don't come to me, wait for Sukkot to come to me. Rosh Hashanah, I'm coming to you. That's the Machut of Hashem, Yerat Shemayim, that Hashem Rebbe comes down to us. You know, the whole Tachlit of going to the Beit HaMikdash is for Yerat Shemayim. L'man Yira, the Pasuk says, L'man Yira, you come to the Beit HaMikdash for Yerat Shemayim. So how can you have Yerat Shemayim and Rosh Hashanah if you're not going to the Beit HaMikdash? Because Baruch is coming to you, that's why this is your And that's why there's such a pacha, because wherever you are, wherever you are, and we have Elul to prepare ourselves, the king is coming, the king is coming. Coming to us. So we have to be the chazek at of the Yerat Shemayim, because if he's coming to us, we have to be prepared for that. The kelim is Yerat Onish, that's what we're good at doing, because it's in our hands. But the skula and the tefillot of Hashem, we're davening from Malchut, and we're davening from Shemayim, as Hashem is saying, take all this garbage. And turn it into Yerat Aramot and Haravai, Yerat Achet, and Shibizeche, to a Hashanah of tremendous B'day Kudshu, the Kaddosh Baruch Hu, No Yom Yerasecha, with Medubakim Bi Yerasecha, that's a Yiddish delight. I like to be with Shivadas, with Bitochim, and Simcha Yisera. Shal Bizeche to that, and the Kisira of Simcha Yisera. Amen. Nefesh, Rabbi Shua, Nefesh, he gave those back to his beginning also. All of Shana and Nefesh, those are... That's right, that's right, that's Tshuva. Our doing Tshuva is the Nefesh going back to it. To, to its source, to the Nikuda of the Shavish and Shana. That's what, what happens during this time. Is then everything ends up in Geula, that it's in Chala, that it's Sukkot? Sukkah, you're living in Geula. Meaning, being in the Sukkah is living in your mini Geula. Your mini, that it's your mini state of Yomot HaMashiach, or the Mabah, in your Sukkah. You've created that through your process of Rosh Hashanah and Kippur. But the idea is, is that you're supposed to make such a kinyan during this time period that, that, that it doesn't go away. And the way that you're able to be mechazek this, this kinyan that you've made is through limud hatayra. Limud hatayra is, is limud hatayra. If Chodesh Cheshvan does not have any, not a yom tov, not a tanit, nothing, it's empty. That's what the Swami says, it's called mar cheshvan. Mar cheshvan, it's bitter. It's bitter month, because even a tanit in a, in, a, in a chodesh gives us a certain sweetness. Yeah. Even tanit is sweet. Yeah. My cheshvan is so bitter because there's nothing. So what are you supposed to do during cheshvan? Limit the Torah. Steiging and learning. That's what it's about. So you're learning the Torah. Once you reach the place of Yerat Shemayim and Simcha and Ahava, and then you apply that to Limit the Torah now, that's called Torah Lishma. You are now prepared to learn Torah Lishma. And that keeps you going until you come to Hanukkah. And then you reside to that Allah with the Lechayshah, which is... Different time. Go ahead. Go ahead. When you when you have in your mind that if I do this, if I do this, 